I'm just going to duck out for a minute, Denise, and switch over to our mobile device one moment. And I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Um, Oriol will be in, in bed right now, but he he knows I like to do like him. I like to do risky things, so we're we're crossing our fingers um, as we as we as we transition um, to the to this part. But as we um, wait for Darren to to come back in with his um, mobile devo device, um, just you know, really would like to. Um, to reinforce this point that the team does have a very active learning system and we're going to transition to the huddle right now. I am the shift coordinator and care coordinator. We've got Adele on triage. Chris is our care coordinator. For SASA Health Nurses, we've got Ali and Courtney is doing the pool. Uh, clerical, we've got Sarah and Ellie and our medical officer today, Jane. We've got Tammy and Jesse on management days today. Uh, how did we perform yesterday? So 26 polls um, yesterday, uh, 17 for the doctor, 9 pathway, we had 2 CTA clinician on scene, uh, CTA no clinician on scene, none, and none for eyes on scene, direct RECF, uh, we had 5 referrals, which is our target, which is good. Uh, we didn't have any uh, prisoners come through yesterday. Three regionals. Time to treatment in progress is 29 minutes and 51 uh, minutes for colon. Pathway utilisation is 77%, which is great. Does anybody have a patient story from yesterday? No. We did have a, um, I had one yesterday, which was a lengthy consult with Dr. Tam. Uh, the one that was an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. Um, confused gentleman, language barrier in a RNCF. Um, we were querying whether he was in urinary retention or constipated. We'd organised for an ECP to come out and do a bladder scan. Um, we've organised for a few different things to happen. Um, when the ECP finally arrived, she took off his um, heel protector boots and it turned out that was the cause of his agitation because as soon as they came off, he was settled, he was eating, he was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> so we fixed him just by removing his boots. Um, but he was going to end up getting um, sedated and restrained um, and that sort of thing. So it was a really good for that one yesterday. Uh, any safety concerns today? No. Uh, NPS uh, net promoter score 50 and uh, that was from six responses. Recognition, Dr Jane knocked it out of the park. To <laughs> the risk reduction in EV we've got RACF patients. Uh, hospital at home for IV antibiotics and a direct event with the Jerry's team. Um, congratulations to our um, team, Emma and Darren's um, presentation for Research Week won the Continuous Improvement Implementation Science for Introduction of Collaborative Patient Assessment Model in a Virtual Care Setting. Well done. <laughs> well done team. Um, and we have received 300 improvement slips. And that's today? Today. today. Yes, I think that's the 300th one this morning. Perfect. Um, quick hits. So we are still having to update teams um, and restore the network folder. Anybody had any issues with that still? No. Um, delays in care answering calls, I think that's sort of resolved now. So we'll probably get rid of that one from there. Um, the zebra sticker printer is waiting a part. Um, so any documents that need scanning in, can you please write on your three patient identifiers, pop it in the scanning box and it will get scanned into the patient's record um, as soon as we can. Uh, on call today is David. Any tech issue so far? No. Any barriers? Claire's got three beds um, with limited eyes on scene today. Um, they've just got some staffing issues. 
so far so good. Everybody happy? If we link in the PCC's extended capacity into that too, so we do it later. Oh, yeah. So everyone got the board, it's on the team's channel as well. Yeah, so the PCC's this week, Home Marshes open from 9, and Para Hills at the next GP, 1.30 to 5.30, and that's... Uh, ends, I think it's still going tomorrow. Um, so Sunday it'll be back to um, usual business there. Everyone happy today? Yep. It's Friday. Um, after beds, occupied 7, available 9. Uh, no regional transfers are outstanding. EMR, just focus of the week, uh, EMR referral folks, just remember to put your crew number in uh, or if they're from a RATS regional site or temple. Um, and just remember your acronyms. With the discharge summaries, any advice or care in place, can you please um, send a discharge summary if they're from a RATS or um, from a, another regional site, can you please send it to the site, not the patient? Learning time today, we have got in service on top workshop with Priscilla ending on Adele's day, attended the um, trauma in old persons workshop uh, last week, week before, so we're going to present on that today. And so the experiment <laughs> campaign there was just for the director beds uh, during the department. Yep. So yeah, the template here is just for the direct admission pathways, so we can directly admit patients to the Queen Liz um, with shortness of breath who are negative for COVID. I don't think we've had any so far, have we? No, not that I'm aware of. As I'm seeing, pilot is continuing to last referral at 5 p.m. We've got new COVID house COVID referral pathway that's in the clinical drive. We're still at COSAT 3, so rats every second shift for all staff, please. Um, and to do a rat, uh, sorry, a PCR if you are positive, and please report it via the online QR code. Masks at all time, and COVID vaccinations are available at Flinders. You just need to book an appointment for that. Um, nursing Enterprise Bargaining Agreement voting closes today, so please do that if you haven't done so already. Uh, we've got the updated pull from pending pathway and script in the clinical drive, so that's being used between 9 and 9am uh, and 9pm, and we've got Courtney here doing our pull today for that. Uh, increased capacity PCC we've spoken about, upcoming changes, uh, we've got Arvinus Community Nursing is going to be doing some direct referrals to ACS. It's the same process as the RACF uh, referrals, and that is coming soon. We have got um, the current trial with Queen Liz. We've got a disability support workers referrals that's going to be starting from the 7th of December. So similar to RACS and we can do eyes on scene with that as well. Obviously if you book in the patient in and then you identify that they could do with a nurse there. Um, a lot of these patients have just got disability support workers. Can you please contact RDNS and do a referral? And from the 15th, we've got the COVID high risk hub um, that's going to be working alongside BCS. Um, and we will have additional staff for that an extra GP and one nurse. Uh, we've got the Chris Pringle, if anybody's interested, $20. Uh, and write your name on there by positive us on the 28th. Uh, we've got our first birthday coming up on the 8th of December. Um, if you are interested in attending that, there will be cake. <laughs> Please email, there's an email address on there. And again, that's RSVP by the 28th. And we've got our Christmas party coming up. Deposits were due uh, yesterday, so you might have missed out. <laughs> Sorry. Um, any questions, concerns, feedback? Now, we're also doing a fundraiser for um, the Smith family for Christmas. Um, if you want to do a um, donation for that, you can do a virtual present, scan the code, do a, um, a donation through that. That'd be great. All right. Thank you all. Have a good day. Thank you Thanks, Ben.
So Darren, I'm unmuting myself. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Um, so, so I gather. Thank, thank you to the team for for sharing that. They're all camera shy. By the by, the, <laughs> we're really grateful to to Bev. Um, so, so I gather your your readiness is pretty pretty good today. You're all ready to go. You haven't got any problems that are that are barriers to care. No, no, everything's uh, uh, working as expected um, today. So, so the team are, team are doing a great job. One of the um, what what would be one of the most common problems that comes up on a day by day yeah. basis? Um, yeah, I think there's probably um, some concerns sometimes around technology. Um, so we might be having some issues with uh, people being able to refer into us through using the um, you know the mobile phone networks, or um, occasionally we end up with some network or connectivity problems here in in our building, um, which which often. Um, you know, that's, that's probably our, our biggest and most common uh, series of issues. I think the other thing in terms of barriers is um, access to any of the external services that we use on a regular basis. So sometimes they're at capacity or they're short staffed. Um, and so not having them available really impacts the way that we can deliver care um, outside of hospitals. And can you usually make progress on that on a day by day basis? Or yeah, that... often um, if we know what's what's not available, we can um, often liaise with different services, or you know maybe cross some of those geographical boundaries for patients to um, you know to get get them referred to something that um, can do a similar service that might just be a little bit further away from their normal um, area. So that daily escalation is really important. Absolutely. So I can see you've. Um, pointing there at the learning system, but I'm not quite sure what you've got in store next for us. Um, to, yeah, so I was just going to, um, I'm just going to introduce Emma, who's one of our um, improvement coaches. Um, and Emma's just going to talk a little bit about the learning system that we've got here. And she really... I think we've lost you, Darren. Okay, little technical glitch. Matt, yeah, Matt, it does look like we yeah, lost Darren okay. there. Denise, just checking we'll probably that, get him back. Yeah, I was just checking that. That, that was me and 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 not something else. Um, I know a little bit about what Emma was going to talk about there, which is um, which is a shame. We'll see if um, I'll send him a quick text. See that he's going to try and come back. Um, the the learning system is, and I'll just I'll just share my screen to talk a bit a little bit about it because I have got a couple of um, I have got a couple of presentation a couple of slides that will help and Matt you'll keep an eye on whether the team's coming back yeah in. I'll keep an eye on for Darren thank you oh there's your slide deck I'll throw that up thank you so you um we saw this sort of picture of the learning system and the team has been really um deliberate um about establishing their learning system and um, you also heard that little comment during huddle that, you know, we've just hit 300 improvement slips and all staff are encouraged to be part of um, raising ideas for improvement. Um, oh, there's Darren and Emma's still there. So I'm going to stop sharing and go back to the team. I was, I was doing a bit of, bit of a description of the, um, of the learning system. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Denise, and sorry about the technology. So we'll head back to Emma. Thanks, Denise and Darren. Um, so our learning system, we've been very deliberate in setting up our service with lean fundamentals and foundations um, and in applying our learning system to all elements of our practice. So our key elements of our learning system are daily observation of care processes. So this is about um, going to Gemba each day, observing the processes. So the data can tell us so much, and we do have a fantastic data team that can pull together dashboards and analytics for us um, very quickly. But actually going and seeing and watching um, gives you so um, much more richness to that data, gives you that qualitative information, and you can really see where the opportunities are for improvement and what the impact of the service is for the patient. So the improvement coaches, um, and the project team are involved in going to Denver and doing the tracking, but we also involve our leadership team and also our nursing um, team all have time, um, non-clinical time set aside where they can actually just sit back and watch and reflect and learn. 
Um, so we measure our performance daily, as we saw earlier, um, via our daily huddle board. Um, we capture problems and ideas for improvement daily as well. So we've got just a slot by our huddle board where staff can submit improvement ideas. They can also submit them online via a link. Um, and we keep all of those improvement ideas in the spreadsheet and we discuss them daily via our learning huddle. So just this morning I picked up six improvement slips, which we've now popped over to over 300 improvement ideas. Um, we have daily reflection and learning, so we reflect on our performance via the huddle, and we also have our learning time sessions. Um, and we inform our practice space environment in the living lab, which Ash will talk about a little bit later as well. So I might talk to you quickly about our problem solving sessions. Yeah. So we run twice weekly problem solving sessions um, in our dedicated learning time. So with the team, we work through a problem that might have come through by <coughs> Um, so some of the examples of things that we've worked through are how do we make sure that our patients receive their discharge summaries when you're running a service virtually. Um, and we've also worked through how to capture a patient's uh, ECG image and how that can be uploaded into the patient's medical record because you don't have a physical piece of paper right in front of you. So we do capture all of our, um, we've got a team improvement and problem solving framework and we do write up all of our sessions um, in a simplified A3 process, and then we save them in our clinical drive uh, for our staff to access, but they're also readily available in the quality bar as well. So as part of that, we're maturing our problem-solving capabilities. So we've recently done a workshop with the team on A3 problem-solving methodology, and we're working through a living A3. So I might just put it down to one if we just yeah, go down and have a look at that. Yeah, let's do that. So this is our living A3 problem solving. So we're, we're basically um, working with the team to work through that A3 thinking. And we're currently looking at our visibility of our patient journey throughout the VCS visit amongst all members of the team. Um, so we've sort of worked through our, working through our left-hand side of our A3, so we're up to our current state analysis. Um, we've got lots of good visuals there to engage the team. Um, team members come up and have a look and provide feedback regularly. Um, and we can just run sort of 10 minute sessions each day to talk people through the problem. Um, we're working through, we've developed our own problem solving framework and we're working through using that methodology. So that's been um, a good example of getting the team members doing the work involved in actually improving the work. Thank, thanks, Emma. Um, it's been it's great to see how I don't I don't get to see you all very much these days, but it's just been wonderful to see how having a dedicated improvement lead within the service, working with the leaders, working with the team members, developing the capability of of the team. I don't know how the team are feeling today. Whether they'll let us have a little flip around just to to see what the how the service is going and what that's looking like. Um, so I think everyone's dying to see what a what a virtual emergency department actually looks like, and um, you know one of the really interesting things is there's there's no patients there physically, um, which you know takes us all a little bit of time to get used to. So so thanks, Darren. And then I think we're going to take a walk up the up the corridor um, towards yeah, just, our um, living lab. I think Denise, just before oh, we do that, Chris. we might just have a we might just have a quick chat with Chris about uh, his role here and how he finds it. Hello, how you going? Good. Is that Denise? It's, yeah, we've got Denise online oh, and, 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 just, and just a few friends. Oh, yeah. lovely. lovely. Um, what do you, sorry. Yeah, so, so Chris, how, how are you finding it? What, what's, um, you know, what's been your highlight um, from moving yeah. from your previous role to coming here in virtual care? I think it's just the impact that you can sort of have sort of virtually and actually getting patients the right care sort of at the right time, but not necessarily going through the traditional pathways. Yep. Um, it's been quite rewarding just sort of even just sort of jumping on the phone with the doctors and just yep. saying potentially what, what we could do yep. sort of in another pathway or anything like that. Um, my background's sort of from the community, so I sort of have a quite an in-depth knowledge of community services throughout um, the metropolitan area. So no, I think that's been really, really rewarding. And just I think a lot of the patients have have really good feedback that, you know. It's, it's been a good service and it's, it's worked out well for them. So, yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much. We'll uh, leave you to it. No worries. Um, so we're just going to go for a little wander. My apologies uh, for any... Um
camera wobbles as we go and we just um, we're just going to stop at our patient feedback board so um, as we mentioned earlier we spend quite a bit of time at, you know doing some surveys with patients to, to collect a net promoter score but we also then take that uh, provide them with the opportunity to uh, feedback to us at um, or you know to request some additional information um, or a callback from us so that we can get some more in-depth feedback from them and so what we do with that is we take the um, information that uh, what um, partners and, and patients have told us and then really turn that into our actions that we're using here in the service so um, you know it's uh, really important for us to have that information visible so we've got the board here um, we've also got just above the uh, photocopier here um, the patient feedback uh, from the monthly surveys that we do um, and having that feedback visible to us at all times is really um, a really important way to keep us connected to the patient. I think, um, you know, running a virtual service, it's very easy to forget uh, the, the, about the patient a little bit or would be very easy. So having their, their feedback uh, available and visible for people, um, you know, the good and the bad is really, um, really important for us. I think that's a really good point, um, Darren, around that, you know, that difficulty sometimes of hearing the patient voice when they're not standing right in front of you all the time and that, that making that, you know, really, really visible is, is important. So I think we're going into the living lab now and the living lab is an important part of the, of the learning system where you tackle bigger things. And I think we've got Ash there. Absolutely. Um, he's going to talk a little bit for, you know, I think we've got about five minutes where we could talk a little bit about the Living Lab, what the Living Lab's about, and, um, um, you know, maybe one of the experiments that you've been running. Hi, Ash. Hey, guys. How are you going? Um, do you want me just to jump straight in? Absolutely. Let's do it. Okay, so when we designed sort of the virtual care service, one of the things we were really passionate about was trying to create a service where we could continually improve but also innovate and deploy innovation really quickly in the service. We had a real passion to try and innovate like a tech company rather than a health service. Now, we haven't got anywhere near close to landing that at this stage, but the Living Lab was really designed as a space where we created time, we created a resource and we created a space where sort of some of our key staff would break out to look at sort of ways that we could innovate, ways that we could integrate digital technologies into our service and deploy those, um, deploy those innovations in a rapid cycle of improvement to test and look at how we could scale them quickly. So we created some principles around our living lab, around what we were trying to do, and that was really about that digital and virtual healthcare innovations and to improve and innovate quickly. And it was really designed around creating that way to come together to drive change and look at how we could sort of deploy that across the system. So we looked at an approach around how we could create some of those PDCA cycles, how we could bring in both external literature, external evidence, and also integrate that into the way we know our service works to really push best practice across sort of what we're trying to do. We also try to really integrate data, and I've typed the dashboard up behind us there that you know we can see in the background. So it was really looking to try and be driven by our data and evidence around what we're trying to do. So and so, so Ash, can I just ask a question? You, you, um, just one, you, you've had the opportunity to learn a little bit or quite a bit from your data already, haven't you, even though you haven't been around that long, um, but you're absolutely. very intentional about learning from your data. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a sort of data team here that sort of we really, we look at our data daily. We've got a myriad of different data visualisations we look at. Um, one of, some of the stuff that we're really interested in is some of those real patient-centric measures. And one of sort of the ones that we track really closely is the time from when a patient lands in our service to when they're actually talking with one of our senior medical officers. And that currently sits at 15 minutes in our service, which, you know, in no emergency department in Australia, you would be speaking to a senior doctor within 15 minutes of landing in the service. So it's some of those metrics that we think really highlight the value of what we're trying to do. Um, Flicking back to the Living Lab, I'm going to touch on two projects really briefly, which I think highlight what we're looking to do. The first of those is our digital stethoscope. Um, we had a patient scenario really early on in our service where um, basically there was some feedback through to our doctors around sort of what the auscultation findings were for that particular patient. But when we sort of reviewed that case um, after the fact, it was felt that if the doctor was auscultating that patient, they might have picked up on sort of some of the clinical indicators that might have directed the way we cared for that patient. So an idea fell out of that, that there are some digital stethoscopes on the market at the moment, 
And if we could deploy them out to ambulance crews in the community, it might help our doctors here within the command centre in virtual care to actually make better clinical decisions about the patients they're looking after. So we all got really excited about this. We purchased a number of these digital stethoscopes and we designed the Living Lab project to test these digital stethoscopes to see how they would work in a hospital environment with some of our doctors that are currently working in the hospital to make sure the devices were actually fit for purpose and that they were technically useful enough to actually deploy out to the ambulance crews in the community. And we got really excited about this. We thought this was going to be a great project and really change the way we delivered care. We got held up a little bit in our rapid innovation cycle on this one because we needed to get some ethics approval and that kind of thing. But fundamentally, after somewhat of a drawn out pro process, we actually realised that these stethoscopes weren't actually technically good enough for us to actually deploy out into the ambulance crews. So it was one of those projects that we've ultimately had to park and feed back to the vendors of the stethoscopes to actually let them know that these are the gaps that we currently see in the product technically before we could look at scaling that into the community. And I think sort of looking at how we've run that, if we innovated and used that in a sort of more traditional health service innovation, we would have gone out and bought 100 of these devices, gone through a six to 12 month process to deploy these before we actually realised that they weren't fit for purpose and weren't going to deliver on the value that we were hoping. Um, so that was, I suppose, an example of where the project didn't really succeed its initial sort of, I suppose, intention, but it sort of highlighted if we use those small scale innovations, we can actually sort of take that sort of fail fast before we've actually scaled throughout. The other project I'm going to touch on in one minute is a current project that we're working on at the moment. As Denise mentioned, we're really intentional with our data and our sort of um, algorithmic development capabilities here. What we've currently got in train is we're developing an application that we can push out to the ambulance crews in the community where they can enter some key clinical metrics about the patient and they can actually get some clinical decision support around whether they should call the virtual care centre or whether that patient is too unwell and they should be directing that patient directly through the hospital. So we've got a pilot app um, ready at the moment and we're currently working through sort of scale, looking at how we actually pilot that and deploy that with a select sort of group of the ambulance crews to see if we can actually make that work um, and add value to the decision making of the crews in the community. Fantastic, Ash. Thanks so much for, for sharing those. And I, I do love that story about how, you know, without this living lab process, we might have just pushed forward with those digital stethoscopes and, and not gone through those learning cycles. Um, you know, quite so well. Um, so, so Darren, um, thank you for taking us to Gemba. It's great to, to see what the virtual care service um, looks like. We're going to um, wrap up 30 seconds ahead of time and then I'll get the, um, I'll, I'll, I'll get the gold star from, from Chris and then I think from Oriol and Angelina from Singapore who are going to come after us. So um, thanks to all the virtual care service team. Thank you, Emma, and thanks, Mark, for being part of the presentation as well.